Hi everyone, welcome back. In this series, we are going to discuss Cisco SD-WAN lab setup and few concepts of the Cisco SD-WAN components and the protocol used in SD-WAN. Let's go to it. So as you guys are aware, the Cisco SD-WAN consists of four components mainly. One is the vManager and second is vSmart, vBond and vH. So basically in SD-WAN, we take out the uh, control plane information from the router, then we feed it from the controller. So the uh, device in the path only know about the how to send the traffic. They will not do any calculation. So the all the calculations all be done by the controller, then it will fed the information to the remote end device. So uh, we have separated the management plane. So management plane is controlled by the vManage. The second is the control plane. The control plane is managed by the uh, vSmart. And the uh, orchestrator plane here, because when it comes to SD1, the orchestration is very important. So orchestration is controlled by the uh, vBond. And the last layer is the data plane. So the data plane traffic will be forwarded using the VH or CH. Here you guys can see that it's all start with V because V means it's Webtala. So Cisco acquired the Webtala and they uh, named it as V Manage, V Smart, V Bond and VH. And we have the Cisco devices. So that is called as a CH. Okay. Let's discuss about this in brief, the each components. Uh, v Manage. V manage is the uh, NMS network management system that is used to configure and manage the VH and CH devices and it can create and it can store the configuration. Also what it does is, is generate the bootstrap configuration to provision VH and CH devices and we can access it using the GUI. And next we are going to see about vSmart. vSmart is nothing but a controller which manages the connectivity between the H devices. And each connection is a DTL tunnel. Datagram transport layer security carrying the encrypted payload between the vSmart controller and VH router. So basically between the uh, vSmart controllers and the VH router. And it also does the authentication and is using the pre-installed credential. So that we will discuss in the uh, after sessions because we'll have a lab later to this. I will explain you. Okay. And then we smart control can communicate with each new devices as they come online and ensuring that, you know, only the authenticated devices are connected to our network, not the bogus network will try to access our network, connect to it. So we use this authentication and we smart can be accessed using netconf as well as the CLA access. The next is the vbond. So vbond is our orchestrator, which performs functions such as authentication and authorization of each element in the network to onboard as well as to remove it from the network. And vbond orchestrator maintains a DTLS tunnel with vSmart controller in the network. It uses DTLS to communicate with the VH router as well once they come online so that it can authenticate the router and aid the router to join our network. And the last one is the VH or CH. So VH or CH is considered a WAN edge router, which carries the secure data payload between the EVHS using the secure protocol. And the VHS uses a protocol session between the vSmart and the VHS. So that is called OMP protocol. So that is called overlay management protocol. So it uses the and share the control plane information from the one VH to the vSmart from vSmart back to the other VHS. And VHS does support protocol like static OSPF and BGP. And it does suppose the uh, encapsulation IPsec gray and DDoS and NAT and QoS and few features and it also support the uh, standard protocols like SNMP 
NTP, DACP, syslog, and SSH to monitor the network. Next, we'll understand the overlay. So in Cisco here for the SD-WAN, we have the different use case in terms of VPN numbers. So VPN number zero indicates that it's a transport VPN and VPN 5 and 2 indicates that it's an out of management band management VPN. The last one VPN 1 to 511 and 513 to 65527 used for the service data traffic on the EVH. So basically this VPN 0 and VPN 512 is used in VSmart, VBond and VHS but this VPN 1 to 511 and 513 to 6 double five two seven used only on the VH device for the data plane traffic. Next we uh, seen about the DTLS. So Cisco SD-WAN uses the DTLS or you can call it a TLS tunnel between the devices between the vSmart to vBond and vSmart to the VH devices. So DTLS is nothing but data gram transport layer security is based on the TLS. Next is the uh, OMP protocol. Let's discuss about that. So basically OMP is a overlay management pro protocol. So here we have the underlay and overlay. So we use the uh, overlay protocol as OMP here in SD1. So it's all like uh, one TCP based protocol like BGP. So that establish the such sessions and maintains the SD1 control plane uh, which runs between the VHS and the vSmart. So by default, it is enabled. We can also see this uh, output by using this command show OMP summary. And here you can see in the diagram. Here the OMP session is between the VH2 vSmart to all other vSmart here and between the vSmart to vSmart. So that the control plane information will be synced to all the vSmart as well as to the whatever the required vSmart controller information that will be shared with the VH routers. Okay. Next is VH router advertisements. There are three, three type of routes we can say. One is the OMP routes, TLOC routes and service routes. So in mostly the OMP routes and TLOC routes are very important. Let me discuss. Let's discuss about the OMP routes. OMP routes also referred to as V routes. So if someone like tells you about the it's a V route means it's a OMP routes. Uh, so these are the prefixes which are learned from your switch or your, your local network. Uh, using some uh, dynamic protocols such as OSPF or BGP towards your edge devices. From edge device, that's your uh, VH, then to your local network. Then those prefixes are then redistributed into your OMP and advertised with, to the vSmart controller. So in the OMP as some route attribute that will also get advertised and these are the uh, route, advert route attributes advertised along with the OMP routes and it is very important that it's same like BGP right so in BGP uh, we have the uh, routes is valid when the next stop is valid right if you don't have the next stop then the route will be put into invalid same like OMP routes the next type of route which is T lock so if the T lock is not available in the routing table that particular route OMP route will put it as an invalid in the routing table. So you can use show OMP command to verify it. The next route is the TLOC routes. So advertise transport located of the connected van transport along with additional attributes. Basically the TLOC has three components that is used to uniquely identify a each TLOC routes. So basically it is the system IP color and encapsulation type. The system IP is not a physical interface IP or the WAN interface. It is a system IP that we configure because in the internet world, right? So when you connect to an internet service provider, 
there may be a chance that your WAN link IP may change. So to avoid this, we use the system IP in the T lock information. And color is basically uh, you have two or three service provider on the network, as well as you can connect to MPLS also. So we color it as like internet service provider as blue and ISP2 as a green. So it is used to color the system. And third is the encapsulation type. So it could be the gray or IPsec. Mostly we use IPsec for the security purpose. And we can use this command to verify the T logs on the VH routers. That is show OMP T logs. And T log carries certain attributes. And these are the attributes of the T log. Consider like private and IP and IPv4 and IPv6 and ports, public IPv4 and IPv6 address and ports, color we discussed, encapsulation, preference, and these are all the same like the BGP attributes, right? So it also advertise. That's what we mentioned that it's same like the BGP. And the last one is the service router. So service router represents a network that your VH router is connected to a load balancer or a firewall. So that route is considered as a service routes. So you can use this command show OMP services to verify it. So here you can see the diagram how the uh, routes gets propagated. So basically you have the uh, DTLS connection inside the DTLS. You have the OMP session will be formed and all this update will be shared inside the DTLS tunnel. So here you can see in the T1. So there is an IP and you will have the uh, consider. Let me write it so that you will be able to understand easily. So you have the uh, IP 1.0.0.0 slash 24. Then you have the color, which I can say it is green. The last information is IPsec. So this is how the TLOC information will be shared with the RIP. Hope you understand this, the format. Okay, then the once vSmart receives this, the OMP update and the TLOC information, then it will share the TLOC to the remote edge devices then they will form the IPsec tunnel. So basically what happens is T log one will be advertised here and T log three will be advertised here. So if you don't configure any policies here, then what happens is by default, it advertises all the T logs to the remote edge devices, which is the VHS. Then if I have one T log, then I will check. Then I will try to form an IPsec tunnel towards it if I have the reachability. Consider if I have an another service provider, if I have the two T logs, then I will form a two IPsec session between this same VH devices. And in order to form this, the both site ID should be different. That is a criteria. Now we have some understanding about the routes. Let's discuss about the last point of this video which is the BFD protocol. So basically uh, BFD is used as an overlay data once the IPsec tunnel is established. So BFD is a bidirectional forwarding detection is automatically started on top and you cannot disable it. It's like by default it is enabled. So you cannot disable. And VH uses BFD to detect the tunnel link state, measure the real time performance characters such as the packet loss, jitter and latency. So BFD plays a very important role in sd wan setup. So here you can see uh, the same set like same figure that we discussed in the last slide. So once the IPsec tunnel is formed, then it will form the B BFD session between them. If BFD session is failed, then that route is considered as an invalid. Then it will be removed from the RIP. 
by default the uh, bfd allow and bfd um, uh, dead timer you can consider so hello interval is 1000 millisecond and multiplier is 7 by default so in case like it wait for the 7 time 1000 milliseconds if i didn't receive any hello interval then i consider that bfd is down then it will inform v smart accordingly and the session and the particular session will be the route will be removed from the v smart i hope uh, this is uh, informative to you guys like uh, the basics and if you like this video then please subscribe my channel and like it so that it helped me to come up with more videos in the next video we'll discuss about the how to bring up the home setup using the evng we will discuss about that in the next video thank you everyone for watching